Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Path of Wildness Meditation on this uh, dark uh, 30th day of August 2016. Uh, the Path of Wildness, I've been, it's been a couple of days. I've been doing this, of course, every day uh, on my own, but I haven't turned the camera on for a bit, which is a bad thing because when I turn the camera on, I'm more thorough. When I don't turn the camera on, I just kind of race through it. So this is a worthwhile exercise in, in, in that capacity. I wonder if that's why uh, things like prayer uh, are done, are more effective in a more ritualized manner or in a setting such as at a church, if people then take it more seriously. Anyway, uh, the Path of Wildness is a walk of equanimity, balanced movement through life, uh, guided by uh, developed principles and uh, uh, up towards objectives that, uh, again, are developed. I emphasize that word developed. These are not uh, prescribed principles and, and objectives, but developed principles and objectives uh, through our own uh, you know, mental machinations, <laughs> observing the world and making sense of things. So that's one of the uh, principal things of all of this, is that uh, it needs to be uh, our own. We need to work at it. So there are three objectives. The first is the um, objective to develop good, sound principles, as I mentioned before, based on reason. The second objective is the uh, cultivation of good emotional reactions to the circumstances of our lives, so that life, uh, when it takes us by surprise, when we're ambushed by the uh, events of life, by the unexpected, that uh, we can maintain at least some semblance of control. Even if inside we're, um, we're brewing, we uh, can exercise some restraint over our emotions to uh, get us through in a more mature manner. It's really the key to, the, to, to all of this. And in a way, as my, my, my friend David uh, was pointing out to me that there was a distinction between the path of wildness as I defined it in Japan and the path of wildness meditation, as, which I'm doing right now, Yet I was thinking that, in fact, um, whereas the path of wildness meditation, the path of wildness that I prescribed in Japan was a way to get out, for to get out of a stuck rut, so, you know, move forward in life, kind of like a, a, a push in a way that we do on ourselves to uh, to uh, move forward through life. Um, in a way, this is kind of the same because giving in to our emotions in terms of uh, the anxiety about a cho about options and choices and just uh, uh, not moving is a form of giving away, giving in to our emotions. But if we can uh, um, maintain some control over our emotional reactions, then we can recognize that uh, a decision is needed, if a decision is needed, and then you'll like to make that decision or make, exercise the energy to make that decision. The next is the, um, I just want to thank David for his input in helping me to uh, flesh that out a little more. So, and also for the prayer stuff, he was talking to me about uh, that what I do here kind of resembles prayer, which I'd thought of before and it kind of does, interesting. I almost wanted to call this, this activity an atheist prayer, but that seemed too inflammatory. <laughs> So uh, the third is the uh, performance of good actions. Now moving along, because I run out of time on this camera, which has limited memory, I can get about between 10 and 15 minutes before it goes blank. So if you don't see this video up on the channel, that's the reason. Does that make any sense? If you don't see it on the channel? So seven principles. The first is the uh, principle of, of uh, the atomic principle, which I always say wrong. I always say the principle of the atomic principle. <laughs> I should just say the atomic principle. The atomic principle says is nothing more than an observation that the universe is made of bits and pieces that are changing and fluctuating and that what was yesterday is something else today and will again be something else tomorrow. This is gives us two things. It reminds us of the urgency to live because we uh, are trans we will transition into uh, not being what we are soon enough and it also uh, tempers our, uh, our um, minds towards the fact that uh, change uh, is coming and uh, change in terms of what we expect and also uh, change in terms of what we are. So then next is the uh, principle, the social principle, no, the principle of nature. Nature uh, in terms of uh, nature of things in the world. So there are, everything in the world has a particular, and everything on the universe, in the universe has a particular nature, some characteristics about it. 
uh, and it's good to understand what those what the nature of those things are uh, and likewise life so we can look to our our fellows around us and look to what their nature is and if we can understand it we will make better expectations we'll better predict what's going to happen in life um, with when we're dealing with them likewise ourselves we have a particular nature and uh, understanding what our nature is does the same thing it helps us make better predictions about our own choices and act actions but it also helps us to uh, guide our our lives in the direction of things where our aptitudes lie we're in a, in a way from the things which frustrate us and, and uh, are a waste of time, such as careers and activities and people that really aren't a good match for us, and towards careers, activities, and people that uh, are a better match. So that's, that's, that's the principle of nature. The next is the principle of uh, the social principle. Social principle simply observes that human beings are social animals, we need one another, and that uh, it's a worthwhile thing to uh, live towards social ends. That you get more. It's more. It's a. It's. It's. It's more. Uh, what is the What is the word? Concentrated. The good that we perform when towards social ends. The concentrated good. It is very worthwhile to to, to lead with to, to live towards those ends. You'll get a lot of satisfaction about out of it, and the world will be a better place for you for it. The next is the principle of uh, temperance, <clears throat> which is the. Uh, at the key, it's the crux of the uh, of our quest to to control, to better manage our emotions, to uh, uh, and we can do that in very very <clears throat> simple, base and forward way, such as uh, exercising restraint when eating, drinking, playing, working, fornicating, sex, having sex. <laughs> Maybe not necessarily fornicating, but you get the get the picture. Exercise restraint on that, which uh, but it's also more subtle than that. You know, extra temperance also, uh, and um, and in a, in the way that we choose our lives, the way that we orchestrate and plan out our lives, so that we're uh, consuming less yet uh, yielding more. Uh, again, yielding coming back to that social principle and the principle of uh, of nature. Also, uh, temperance is a shortcut to virtue. There is no inherent virtue in consumption, but there is virtue in restraint. There, uh, the next is the principle of uh, the great indifference, which uh, uh, is my observation that the universe seems to be devoid of agency outside of what we see here on Earth with ourselves and our fellows and, and, our, and our, the other species that live here, and especially sentient agency, uh, which seems to be quite limited. Uh, seem, 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 agency seems to, sentient agency seems to be nothing more than a than a, than a, a convenient tool, as much as, as convenient as claws or fangs or fur, for uh, animals in various niches. Likewise, we have it here. It's not necessarily particularly special, though it is special, but it isn't. <laughs> and likewise, we look out into the universe; we don't see it anywhere else. And that is the great indifference. That is, look at that yawning howling wild that looks back at us from, uh, doesn't even look, it, uh, it just yawns at us in its gaping emptiness out there in the universe. Uh, I know it's kind of a bleak view, but uh, in, if, we, if we look at the facts, that appears to be all there is out there. Uh, and any whimsical hope or, uh, or, or claims that uh, it otherwise have yet to be substantiated um, beyond, uh, beyond, uh, beyond uh, supporting the, the, the ephemeral and non-existent supporting infrastructure of uh, terms such as, such as faith and conviction. The next is uh, the principle of uh, uh, reason, which is the governing faculty. Reason is the faculty by which we uh, make sense of the world and uh, determine what is uh, true, real, and objective, and what, uh, and what really makes sense in, uh, in the course of life. And we uh, do that through uh, the observation of facts, the uh, development of, uh, of, of, of premises and arguments that uh, are yield from the, built from those facts, and that uh, give us predictions about how the world may work. And if those predictions tr prove true, then we have some evidence that, that those uh, arguments are indeed true. And we continue to refine them and hold on to them only so insofar as they continue to provide good predictions and, and uh, as better to, uh, hypotheses and theories show up. Uh, reason is therefore the way that we uh, find, we bring ourselves closer to truth in our quest to believe as many real things and believe as many true things as possible and to uh, 
and to avoid as many th non-true things as possible. And finally, virtue. Virtue is the purpose of life. Uh, yeah, we say, some people say that atheists can't have virtue, can't live a virtuous life. We can indeed do that because our, our definition of, of virtue is founded on uh, objective, uh, uh, objective uh, Im improvements in uh, measurable improvements in human in, in, and, in, and human welfare and the welfare of, of the other species that live on our planet. These things, these things, are, these things are objective things that can be measured, improved uh, environment, environment uh, improved mental and social uh, well-being, bodily, bodily state, uh, better infrastructure. These things uh, improve well-being for ourselves and others. And uh, not having things do not. So, uh, so by, by having a, uh, a worldview that's and, and a philosophy that's founded on reason and the uh, um, pursuit of objective, of, of, of social, of social good, aligned with our well, uh, with our, our particular nature, will yield those things. So that's 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 how we have our purpose, and our purpose is is living a good life and making things better for ourselves and others in that in reverse order, others first and then ourselves. Which, which, because we're so much better if we're serving others in the long run, anyway. I think I've covered it all. Hey, eleven twenty-four, and it's still running. Thanks for uh, joining me on today's uh, um, walk path of, path of wildness meditation. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Everybody, who the I, I don't make this for anybody. I just make it to make it to so help me you know, reinforce it. But if anybody watches it, fine. <laughs> See ya.